All right, everybody. Um, looks like Chris is still finishing up, but uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, kind of at least get started a little bit. Uh, I want to welcome uh, everybody that's here. Uh, Cichlids23 is here. Uh, Deborah's here as well. Uh, Deborah, I think this might be your first time here, so welcome to the stream. So, uh, looks like, uh, yeah, Chris is just finishing up his quiz. We actually are going to have a little bit of a quiz tonight as well. So, so yeah, so we'll go ahead here and get it, uh, get it fired up here in just a moment. All right, so, uh, so uh, yep, Deborah, thank you very much for coming by. Looks like, uh, uh, looks like Chris is uh, all set. Uh, so uh, we're going to go ahead here. Uh, I was going to kind of wait for everyone to filter in, and we'll go ahead and uh, we'll wait for uh, everyone to kind of filter in, and we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, thanks, Brandon, for uh, sharing it out. So, uh, while we're waiting, uh, do you guys pick up any new fish, uh, over the, uh, over the weekend? So, uh, let's see. Uh, Aquarium Thoughts is here. How's it going? Alright. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the, uh, with the topics here. Uh, today's topic is going to be um, basically uh, why you should go to uh, small aquarium shows. And I'm going to kind of tie that in uh, with my experience this weekend on the MBI. Uh, so this was the 10th anniversary of the MBI workshop. I've been uh, kind of promoting it here on the channel for a while. So uh, we're going to go ahead here and uh, go ahead and get fired up. So it uh, looks like Dan's here as well. Big D Smoke. So uh, thank you guys for coming on over. Uh, just one second, I gotta answer a text. So Chewy's here. How's it going? So uh, Pam is here as well. So uh, all right. So uh, I am gonna do a, another plug. Uh, you know, if you guys want any, me to promote any of your events, uh, just let me know and I'll go ahead and I can do that. I'll be very happy to do that. So, um, if you guys uh, kind of noticed yesterday, I did put a uh, put a video out about Magna. So, uh, if you guys are interested in the uh, saltwater world, uh, Magna is coming up. Uh, you have this week basically to book uh, your room at the reduced rate at the Swan and Dolphin Resort. So if you guys are interested in that, go ahead and uh, go ahead and check that out. So, okay. all right. So uh, Aquarium Thoughts is going to go to Reef of Palooza in Anaheim. So uh, thank you, Scott, uh, for sharing it out as well. Uh, I've never been to Reef of Palooza. Never been to one. So uh, with that being said, I'm just going to talk for a few minutes, kind of like about why you should go to some of the smaller shows. Hey, Candy, how's it going? So uh, a lot of the times, like the smaller shows, I, I find anyways that you can get some uh, interactions more with the speakers, uh, with some of the other people at the show. Uh, a lot of times, if you go to something like a Macna Aquatic Experience, Aquashella now, uh, you can, so uh, Flint's Fish Forum is here. Uh, so is Forty Four Mag Guy One. Welcome. So, uh, it, well, so you can meet a lot of different people when you're watching 
uh, or going to the smaller convention shows. I mean, I went to the ALA. Um, you get to spend a lot of time with all of the speakers there. You got, you know, it's a lot of smaller, closer knit group. Uh, when you go into the aquatic experience, you know, there's a billion vendors, a billion companies, and it's it's a lot harder to interact with people, at least for me. So I actually sometimes enjoy the smaller conventions. Um, I will say that some of my most conventions have been the smaller ones, uh, like the ALA, for example, in Grand Rapids, which was the first saltwater or freshwater convention that I went to. Uh, it was a really great time. I got to hang out with... Oops, hold on one second. Uh, Chewy has a very good point here. Um, how true uh, to get better knowledge from your speaker at your own aquarium society than even a convention? Yeah, so basically... Uh, one of the ways you can really network with the speakers is driving them somewhere. Uh, so part of my experience with the MBI was I did have to pick up someone at the airport who had missed their flight um, at 10 o'clock at night. So exactly, uh, you know, it's one, of those, one of those exact examples. So I was driving, uh, excuse me, getting a little dry again. So, yeah, local clubs is, are good as well. Um, our club has gotten fairly big from the, uh, well, thank you, Kenny. Uh, so basically, you know, our club's gotten a little bigger, um, and it's kind of uh, harder to get access that way, um, unless you're like the guy who brought in the speaker. There's a like an events coordinator, at least from the Freshwater Club. So it's def it's a little bit of a different environment, but the saltwater one I'm kind of I'm on the board I'm the treasurer, so it's kind of a different experience. So yeah, so you go into the driving people. Um, that's how I've got to meet Corey and Joel in person was driving. Uh, is I drove Corey around in my van for you know basically all weekend. Joel and I went some places too. So driving them, talking to people, getting to know people in those smaller settings is a great way to uh, interact with people in the hobby. So I'm gonna go ahead here, and uh, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna intertwine the MBI in this as well. Uh, yes. Yeah, so Chewy's uh, when Dr. Johan Norton was at our local society, I was her helper. Uh, she came over to see my fish room uh, when I was 15. Exactly. And for example, the gentleman that that I took to the uh, took from the airport, uh, his name's Dr. Paul Anderson. Uh, and he's one of the people who runs Mystic Aquarium out in Connecticut. And um, we talked a little bit later. Actually, we did an interview. Uh, I'll be coming out here on the channel uh, very shortly. So uh, I'll let you guys know when that's coming. Uh, so it looks like Pam's going tomorrow night. Uh, King, Queen Cichlids got to drive Rusty Wessel, Dr. Paul, um, Wayne Leibel, uh, Chris Biggs. Yeah, see, that's the way to do it. You get to drive these people. You talk to them. You get to know them. And it's something that's very, uh, very good. Um, saltwater fish folks, there's a few fish folks here, like Cherry Corals is around, I'm going to talk saltwater for just a minute, uh, Cherry Corals is around here, uh, for example, uh, Bashi is around here, if you've seen the Bashi skimmer, the Bashi company is around here, so there's just a few, there's a few people around Michigan as well, and there's a big, uh, freshwater following, I've not figured out yet, since I'm fairly newer to the freshwater side of it. Uh, all the people that are around. I know some of the people, obviously, I think Josh Cunningham is about an hour from me. Uh, he's uh, he's someone that probably a lot of you would know. Uh, other than that, um, let me see. Uh, there's some po folks in Grand Rapids in the west side of the state. Uh, you've got, like, Pat, names that I've at least heard are Pat Hartman, uh, you know, who's into uh, Gideads, and then you've got uh, Chris Carpenter. Uh, Sergeant Tank is at the west side of the state as well. So definitely pretty interesting stuff. So let me go ahead here, and I'm going to flip over uh, to the screen share in just a second here. And all right, and I'm going to kind of talk a little bit about the. Uh... Okay, so Josh was one of your speakers. Uh, yeah, Chris Carpenter's awesome too. He spoke with us um, a couple months ago, and I got to meet him as well in Grand Rapids. Um, I went to go see uh, Dan uh, from Dan's Fish, and it was, you know, he was a couple hours from me. I was like, hey, I'm going to go see him. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and flip the, uh, 
the screen here. And I'll go ahead and do a share. Uh, on it. Uh, let me go ahead here. And... All right, so I'm going to talk about some of the speakers. And I'm going to go through some of the things that I thought were kind of important. And then, you know, I'll tie that in here as well. So uh, this was the first speaker of the day. Uh, her name is Kathy Leahy. And uh, so she talked kind of about being a... Um, Dan, we'll talk about the Evil Knievel stunt in just a minute. Uh, so that led to um, kind of part of the unfortunate happenings uh, with the drone that we will get to towards the end. So uh, this was kind of interesting. She is more of a hobbyist breeder. Uh, the way this show has kind of turned out, uh, it's, it's kind of become um, a sort of a beacon for public aquarists. Sorry about this, guys. All right. So, so she talked about the uh, a lot about uh, being a hobbyist breeder, and uh, she's. Oh, you left way too early last week. Not the drone. Huh. Yeah, so she's a hobbyist breeder. She's actually one of the few people who's bred um, the Central Pygia angelfish. So if you've heard of a flame angelfish, a uh, fish kind of like that. So uh, you guys will wait to the drone. The, there is a replacement drone already in, in, in place. But uh, definitely there's just something that happened in the game. It took, no, the girls were not at fault for this. This was uh, all my doing. But uh, she's been one of the few, pe you know, a few people who haven't been able to do this. Uh, so she, and again, you know, this picture here, I uh, think I found important. And one of the reasons I saved this picture, uh, you know, it kind of led to the answers on uh, kind of the problems I was having with some of my calm fish, I think. So uh, I may try to do another, uh, excuse me, I might try to do another run on the clown fish uh, once I have some more eggs. Uh, so basically, uh, what she was doing is she was dosing it with bacteria, which was something I didn't think about uh, when I was go ahead, when I was running those tanks. So that was kind of the answer. Uh, that she had a lot of other stuff too. So uh, this Sunday the MBI uh, recap video is going to come out, and then I'll put some more of uh, some, from her talk and all of the other talks that we're going to come up with here uh, once we get there. All right, so this one was interesting too. Uh, so, right, so uh, this is the fish mate feeder, and I've always been using the Eheims. I've been talking, uh, you know, yeah, you know, I took Corey's advice and used the Eheims, but Kathy makes a valid point for these. Uh, so basically, she's got. Um, she uses these, and I questioned her. I was like, "Why aren't you using the Eheims? Those are supposedly like the." Uh, industry standard so basically um, she had a very good point so basically in this feeder and I mean I don't have a picture of it but basically you can put each feeding in its own individual spot and then as it rotates it'll dump the food out so you can so you have a lot more control over the amount of food you're putting in there so that was something that I found very interesting yeah there was a little moldy pizza in the barn I didn't take my plate in and etc etc yeah, I'm sure they'll be back soon. So I found that interesting, and I'm going to try this out and see how it works versus, uh, see how that works versus the Eheim. So I've been uh, poking around looking for this right now. It's hard to get a hold of them, apparently. So uh, Aqua Balls is here. Um, you can go to my house, just don't eat out of the barn. All right. And now uh, this was uh, Dr. Paul Anderson. And uh, this was cool too because I've done a lot of uh, fish feeding videos. And uh, so uh, he works in a scientific lab. Uh, so, hey, Jess, how's it going? So he did some feed valley. He and his students, so they actually run a marine magnet high school.
Thanks, Andy. So, yeah, so basically uh, they did a bunch of feed validation studies. So we'll take national brands and they'll put it on, uh, you know, they'll feed it. And then one of the tests they did was to see basically, you know, after like 30 seconds, a minute, minute and a half, etc., how much food is dropped in the, in the, into the bottom and uh, how long it stays in the water column. So it's a pretty interesting test. So that was one thing I found pretty interesting about this. And this was the gentleman I drove from the airport. So definitely pretty exciting stuff. And then uh, this is a pretty important event. Uh, this was kind of half uh, halfway through the event here. And this was the first awarding of the X Prize. So the MBI, what it is basically, is, a, is to my knowledge, the only saltwater online uh, Breeders Award program. So like in your freshwater club, you have the BAP uh, with different award levels. Same thing uh, with uh, with the MBI. So the MBI is saltwater. And so basically, uh, you can uh, write a report. You have to post like a video or picture proving it. And then there's an approval process, and then you get points. Uh, so this was basically an award to the, the person who had been running this for the last 10 years. His name is Tal Sweet. Uh, he's local to me. And he is right here. Let me get the pointer. So this is Tal. Um, this is Matt Pedersen. Um, I'm standing here for some reason. This is Kathy Lay, who you saw earlier. Uh, this is Josh. Uh, you actually have seen him in the chat every so often. And then uh, this is Joe. So these are the two guys. The three of us, uh, these three and I work together in putting this together. So uh, this is a pretty cool award for Tal. Uh, this was the only one awarded. So it was basically kind of an honorary award. But definitely pretty cool. All right, so uh, it's kind of funny. I had heard a lot of people talking about shrimp. Uh, I do know Steve Allen. Uh, he's from Texas. Uh, he used to be the, uh, I think he used to run uh, Masna before Kevin Peterson, or not Kevin Peterson, Kevin Erickson did. So this is uh, saltwater shrimp collecting. Uh, this is Noel Heinsohn. Um He was the first person to... Uh, to, I think it was Anthea. He did Anthea's. It was the first person to uh, spawn Anthea's and to raise the fry um, all the way to adulthood. So that's a pretty cool accomplishment. He's uh, not very old. I think he's in his maybe mid-20s. But he's working down in Punta Cana. And he's running a uh, basically an aquaculture lab down there. And so one of the species he is working with are peppermint shrimp. Um, I had heard on, uh, I think it was Rob's, he was, they were trying to breed some sexy shrimp. And then, uh, just heard somewhere else, maybe like Lucas is trying to do shrimp as well, uh, from the saltwater side. So, uh, so he did some, uh, shrimp collecting. And then, this is a little bit about the shrimp eggs themselves. Uh, so, some of the shrimp works, you know, this is basically one of his slides. Um. So, uh, talking a little bit about the uh, peppermint shrimp. So, and then we'll get to Matt real quick. And then a lot of this more will be in uh, the video that comes out on Sunday. Uh, I've been starting to work on that. So, so uh, this is the Harlequin file fish. So, this was Matt's second talk at the MBI workshop. Matt's spoken um, probably about... I'm going to say about five. I'd have to, have to go back through all my records and look. Uh, but, uh, so this was kind of the uh, cap off. And he spoke, uh, he spoke about the Harlequin file fish. Uh, he spawned this about ten years ago. Uh, this is a hard fish to even keep alive. Because it's an obligate porlivore. I'll uh, say that eight times very fast. But it's um, basically in the wild it feeds off of coral polyps. Uh, so basically you have to buy uh, corals like for a reef tank. And then you'd have to feed this fish. Uh, but he was able to get this fish onto prepared foods. Um, a lot of things he's using now are, is rapache, which is, you know, we all know is a freshwater food, but he's getting those fish to eat that. And so, and I think that was the last slide. So, like I said, um, I don't know if you guys have any other experiences with uh, smaller clubs you know, or smaller events like this. Um, so this was, you know, there was probably 30 people here. And, you know, as you can see here in the front, there's some of the raffle items. So, 
you know, smaller event, uh, one of the cool things is that if you do the uh, the raffle, uh, you are actually, uh, you got a better chance. And uh, some of these smaller events uh, still get pretty decent prizes. So I'm going to show you a few things actually that I got um, at the event. Uh, one, I wasn't able to get a video of it today. Uh, so we'll start with that one. Um, I did, I will pull it up online and show you what it looks like. So let me get the screen up here. Hey, Kevin's Aquarium. Uh, hey, Fishy Biz. All right, so let's go ahead here, and we will go back to the screen share. So I picked up this. Uh, so I have four of these. Uh, they were in the raffle. Uh, they're called Molly Miller Blennies. And so they're a little blenny. Uh, mine are really, really small right now. So they're... Hold on. So... Definitely a pretty cool little fish. Exciting to see those grow up. And then, so let me flip back again to me. So, with Matt Pedersen there, he is the uh, one of the editors for Amazonas. Uh, so we did get the uh, Amazonas uh, copy of an Amazonas magazine. Uh, they are actually partnered with Coral Magazine as well. So, you know, I got a copy of a Coral Magazine as well. So... That's something I am going to subscribe to. I just haven't gotten to it. A uh, gift card to uh, a local fish store uh, for about 50 bucks, And then I'm going to show you guys this thing. Uh, so this is called the Boston Lar... Getting my daily info from Brother Mike. Can't live without it. So, cool, Scott. Thank you. So uh, this is the uh, Boston Larval Snagger. And I'll actually unbox this and show you kind of how it works. I've never had one, uh, but what it does is basically I might have break it first. This is the light, I think, anyway. But basically, I'll kind of show you. So, so basically, what you would want to do here is you stick this into your tank, and if you see the light, uh, what this light will do, and I'll have to read the directions on how exactly to set it up, but this will attract a lot of the, you know, this is on the inside. Um, there's a, I don't know how you get that out, but it looks like there's a couple of uh, more suction cups here. And I wonder if these are, is this like suction cups? But anyway, so you stick this in the tank, this is on the outside, and then basically um, the light will attract the fish the larval fish into this bucket and then uh, the larva will stay in here but not able be able to get out and that's uh, that's basically so you don't have to pull like the pot so if you're breeding clownfish uh, you don't have to pull the pot out you know and artificially air at the eggs they can hatch with the parents in there and then uh, they'll go ahead and get caught in here but um, I will go ahead and show you guys more about this um, in a future video as well so we'll put that over here and then uh, finally, uh, got a uh, Reef Bright um, LED. So definitely, uh, I bought thirty dollars worth of tickets, and so I think I kind of got my money's worth on that raffle. So definitely another good reason to go to some of the smaller aquarium events. So do you guys have any stories from, from yourselves on uh, any of the smaller aquarium events? Um, I know Scott has always uh, talked about. Um, sorry, fishy business, if I didn't explain that clearly. Um, it traps larval fish. 
So if you have clownfish spawning in a pot, like say like in a pot, and I'll bring this back out here for a second. And I dump all the pieces on the floor. So basically, if they're they're called phototropic, uh, which means that they're attracted to the light. So you put the light here, and then the fish will be able to swim in here somehow, uh, but they won't be able to swim out. So. Uh, so basically, that's how this works: is that, you, that these fish will, you know, this goes on the, in, I just, uh, this goes on the inside of the tank. This kind of sticks to the outside, and then the light will basically uh, trap the, the fish in here. Because if you leave like saltwater fish with the parents, um, they don't make it. We'll just leave it, uh, leave it that way. Hey, Lacey, how are you doing? All right, so that was the uh, the raffle. The raffle was pretty nice. Uh, we had a pretty nice, uh, nice haul. Um, actually, all three of us did. Uh, Joe, uh, myself, and Josh all had some pretty good items. So that's why uh, um, that's kind of why you do uh, you, know, you go to the smaller shows. Oh, <laughs> Chewy's kind of unfair for the IFGA. Okay, so if you guys are want to talk about quizzes, yes, the stuff, spending the time with speakers is the special part. I mean, this stuff's cool. Don't get me wrong, but uh, spending time with the speakers, you know, sucking the knowledge at the hotel when there's not eight million people there, is something. Uh, is definitely something you know, even if, especially more so in person, uh, I find very valuable. So, since you guys are talking about quizzes, I was going to do this a little bit later. Um, I did put together a little quiz for you. So, I am going to put the video on, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and actually do the quiz that Matt does uh, regarding the Orange Spot Filefish. So, um, as we go through this... Cool, cool fishy biz. Uh, that sounds like a good time. That's true. The the dinner afterwards, as well. Um, you guys get instructions, so um, a lot of you probably. Let me see. All right. So let me know what you guys think the fish is. Um, basically, it's going to be uh, sexing uh, orange spot file fish. It's actually pretty easy. Um, so I did uh, take out the part where we all do the where um, he gives you the answers. Uh, so I know the answers. So um, go ahead. We're gonna start. Matt's gonna tell you. Um, this is part of his talk, and then uh, basically you can sex orange spot file fish. Males. Okay, so I'm go ahead and get started. The ventral flap, which is also called the pelvic room, that's the thing so that's on your belly. Talking about uh, here. On the male, it's a deep red fish. Uh, it, it's bordered above in so black, and it has I've multiple. I talked to males. They have a large uh, ventral in flap, in black border. Uh, some deep orange red. red. Uh, the soft portion, so the portions between the dorsal rays and the anal fin rays, are translucent to orange. Um, overall, the male harlequin filefish is more vibrantly colored. So this is a male harlequin filefish. This is Adam B. Individual number twelve. So you can see the uh, um, really bright pelvic movement here, really solid defined red orange so color. That look right the here. Patch of black That's uh, multiple you want to see spots. this whole thing right uh, here. And you can kind of see it's very subtle, but in between each one of those rays, there's a, a faint orange tinge. So females, females the ventral flap may be black, orange, or anything in between, it's, but it's not going to be quite as bright. Uh, it does not have that thick black border on it. Uh, the dorsal and anal fins are completely transparent. There is, that orange tinge does not exist. So this is a female harlequin filefish. And so you can the see here, I don't like is she the does delight. not have that thick black patch. So uh, She has an orange, kind of orange-brown. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. not the top Those right like that first one I showed you. See here. And then again, the uh, anal fin, or sorry, the dorsal fin and the anal fin are both completely transparent. No, these don't have boobs. So this is always fun. We're going to try our hands at it. I'm going to rapid fire this. One, two, three. Shout out your answer. And then I'll tell you what it is. All right. So you guys with me so far? So All right, remember that special flap? Section. That's the easiest feature. All right. Um, I've randomly mixed them up. So now I cut the sound off. Maybe I did. Um, I'm going to count to three. You guys shout your answer, you and then I'll tell you what it is. All right. And we're going pretty fast. Everyone ready? All right. 
What's this one, guys? Male. That one. This one's a male too, right here. Male. See how it's he's. That's a female. You can see there's yes. not a lot there. The vegetable yeah, flap is also called a permanent. That's the thing that's on there. There's one that's a trick uh, on male, it's a deep That one's a male point. for sure. Uh, it, it's bordered above in black and it has multiple rows right. of fine That went awful fast. In that black that went faster than I thought. Uh, sometimes they look I was going to slow it down. Uh, the soft portions, so, uh, so the portions between the dorsal rays that was a little bit fun. <laughs> are translucent <laughs> orange. Um, tea time. Overall, the male flap is not going to spell the tea. No, we've got all of them. Since you don't, Addison. Since you don't really want All us right. here, we won't be here. Come here, Kate. Okay, scoot over and let Addison. I'm not getting off the van. Okay. Well, guess who's here? We're here. And, and, um, and she's right here. Right. Yeah, there we go. And so. Hey, he's the one who broke the drone. Remember yes, that? Uh, he, uh, my mom <laughs> said she thinks um, he already told you, but in case he missed out on some stuff, yeah. So he was flying in here after the last live Girls, stream. Girls, go find we, us some moldy pizza. Where we invaded, and um, he, like after he was flying in, he hit it against something. I don't know. What. Like after you guys left, and then he the next flew it in the morning, and it went, wouldn't yeah, go Yeah, that's down. the neighbor girl that's over here. Her yeah. name's Addison. Yeah, and and he flew yeah, it. Yeah, they in. did. They just stole my thunder, Dan. <laughs> no, no more. <laughs> is this the camera? It is. Here. Put it down! This thing is so weird. Here, just put the camera down. Alright. Lady's place, ha 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 ha. Lady's place. Alright. Um, he couldn't get it back down and it just flew away. And Addison actually, we, were, we went to get her to go to a church camp we had and she put chips over her head in case the drone was going to fall on her. <laughs> Sweet. Alright, guys. I wonder who it did fall on. <laughs> See it fall on you, So we're readjusting the camera here. You right. don't have me. I know. <laughs> hey, right. can I have All a right. seat in your chair? I don't have shoes on. No. Why? You I don't have shoes on. You need shoes to come in here because it's dirty. otherwise it's you'll dirty. come out and you'll be going to the hospital to get like 10 seconds. No, you won't. It's, it's just dirty in here. So, all right, guys. Thank you. Thank you for the drone update. Bye-bye. We're gonna bother you guys. We're gonna bother him in the comments. Okay, is Hope Addison spending the night? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You didn't know that? <laughs> I do now. Go ahead. Okay, bye. Bye. Adios. Bye, people. Adios, amigos. We heard you calling, so we came. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they're file fish. That was a short intermission. <laughs> uh. All right. Yeah, we're all here. We all kind of, uh, we're all good. All right. And. So, since they sort of stole the thunder, so here's what happened to the drone. So after I flew it the last live stream, um, I got a little bit of a little bit of motivation to try to fly it downstairs, and the downstairs is a mess right now. I'm rebuilding uh, some stands and stuff, moving tanks. So I flew it. Um, it kind of got away from me a little bit because if you're flying it in the house, you have to fly it in uh, manual mode instead of like with the, the super easy selfie mode. And it got away with me and it hit the ceiling. And uh, so basically, uh, hit the ceiling, hurtled down, kind of cracked up the bottom of it a little bit. And I think it messed up some of the, uh, um, the sensors and stuff on the bottom. So, uh, but it still worked. So, um, you know, I put the battery in a couple times, got it to reconnect and everything, still worked. You know, kind of did it real quick that night. Um, 
Kind of did a little bit of up and down. Uh, worked okay. So that morning, I uh, woke up Wednesday morning, uh, a week ago. And uh, took it outside. Did kind of one little little bit with it. Came down okay. Um, and then uh, I did it a second time. Uh, I went up and it kept going, 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 going up. And, you know, I hit the emergency like return to home. And it never came back. So, uh, nope, the girls had nothing to do with it. This was all my fault. And basically, uh, it came crashing down somewhere. I don't know where. Um, and the police haven't come by yet, so um, I think it landed somewhere when it didn't hurt anyone, which was kind of my concern, actually. So... All right. Um, it had a homing feature. It just, I think, when I crashed it, it had disabled itself somehow. <laughs> Between the drone story. Uh, <laughs> the chest sheets. I think you mean cheat sheets, Scott. <laughs> yeah. Um, paging Liz. Anywhere, Liz, Liz, anywhere. Uh, we've got the Queen. Uh, queen, anywhere. Queen of Cichlids paging the Queen. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was kind of crazy. It just kept going. <laughs> um. I think the drone's delivering the message to Scott. So it's flying from Michigan to Pennsylvania uh, to tell Liz to uh, watch this stream. Uh, hey, Valley Fish. How's it going? All right. Now that we've talked about, we've hit the drone up. Uh, we've talked a little bit about uh, the MBI. So we do still have some posts of the week. I will buy. I have another drone, Scott. <laughs> that might cost you. <laughs> oh, all right. I'm going to not touch that one. All right. We're going to go to the post of the week, which is not here. Uh oh. Let's try this one. All right. Well. show that one. All right. So, for whatever reason, the first post of the week didn't come through. I uh, don't know why. I'll pull it up on the uh, screen share. <laughs> so, uh, some of the uh, dog shaming videos are kind of funny. Uh, one of the uh, more important uh, things that have, has come about in uh, saltwater marine fish breeding is the uh, arcopopods. Uh, they've um, yeah, Cichlids 23 it is now. It definitely is a Mavic Pro. Yeah, Scott, it's a Mavic Pro. Um, you can uh, send me your uh, if you uh, hook up with me on Facebook I'll go ahead and I'll send you my address. And I'll even do a review on it if you want. Uh, so anyway, so the dog shaming is um, I drank uh, copa pods did not end well. Uh, just so you know, uh, with the uh, copa pods, um, they are generally uh, done with uh, algae, and so uh, the dog probably got some algae and uh, kind of uh, just lost its. It probably um, went through it like uh, copa pods through a goose. That will say. <laughs> so these are fun ones this week. Uh, I didn't find anything too controversial. And uh, this was kind of tied in with the MBI, so I figured I'd share this one. And then uh, the second one is, um, so if anyone's looking for a fish barn, uh, this is uh, for you. So, um, so apparently, uh, if you're close to Royal Oak, Michigan, I am not, but uh, you can buy this she shed. 
and um, basically tear it apart and transport it. And uh, you can just take this thing apart. I don't know how you would take this apart, um, but it looks like a pain in the neck. Is the funk in here? Uh oh, yeah, where have we have the funk? Do we have funk in here? Oh, it's about the shed, yeah. So this is the this is the she shed. So I think if Liz sees this stream <laughs> funk's in the she shed. <laughs> I think so is what Scott will have to buy Liz if she finds this stream is uh, she'll have to buy uh, I think this is a uh, I think Scott will have to come uh, <laughs> will have to come get this <laughs> so uh, Scott this might still be in Royal Oak Michigan so you can come tour the fish barn if you uh, if you need to come get this for Liz so So uh, that's pretty cool as well. So I'll pull up Facebook or let me see if I can find the picture. No. So Kathy, you've got to go. It was a good one too, I think. Oh yeah, it's this one. Alright. Alright, we're gonna go to the screen share for just a minute. And Alright, so this was the first one. So uh, so someone apparently decided to get married in a uh, in an aqua in a in an aquarium. So uh, you got the whale. <laughs> oh boy oh boy okay so you got the minister you got the, the happy couple um you've got glare as with aquariums and then uh, you got the lovely uh you got the maid of honor here i uh, got the blue the whale so i thought that was pretty funny and then i'll put it back to uh put it back to me for a minute There's one other one I'm going to pull up because I thought it was a pretty interesting, actually it's a product. So, I'm going to see if I can find it. This is animated, so I wanted to, uh, to find that. I won't be able to find it now, I bet. We'll skip that one. But what it was was basically it was like a mag magnetic uh, um, bowl, and you'd put the food in it. The fish would come in, and you'd pull it out. You'd pull the magnet, and the thing was set right that it would flip back up, and then you would be able to trap the fish. So uh, yeah, so definitely sub to any of the YouTubers that are in here. Um, you can sub to Scott as well. He's left now, and he's testing out his couch. Uh, so Addison is here. Welcome Addison to the stream. Um, all right, so uh, and uh, so up to Lacey, Fishy Biz. Um, sub to Candy, even though she has no content. Dan, uh, Chewy, Pam. Uh, Pam's going live tomorrow. Um, and as always, check out uh, Chris from Multi Tank Addiction. Uh, Addiction. Uh, who goes uh, live about an hour before me, uh, usually about 8 o'clock, uh, does a lot of artwork. Uh, so he finished a pretty cool-looking guppy picture. 
And then uh, sometimes uh, Susan from SLC Aquatics goes as well. I think she goes around 7. Uh, that's Eastern time, so if you're on the West Coast, uh, take that down by about 3 hours or so. And then, uh, obviously, if you want to subscribe to the Slime Doctors, uh, go ahead. And then let's go ahead here now. Let's see if, if we have any other things. So, so we played the game, which was fun. Um, so the, the Filefish game went awful quick. Uh, do you guys have any other questions? Um, no, that was Katie. I think they grabbed the camera. Um, yeah, so Dr. Black is live uh, 24 minutes from now from Australia. So uh, definitely uh, check out Dr. Black. Um, so, uh, hi girl from the barn. So, uh, actually pretty funny. Um, hey, Nola Jane, how are you? Um, kind of speaking of... That uh, the radio today. Oh, you know, I thought of something. I was going to do this earlier. Um, they were talking about um, the uh, the Old Town Road song, and I actually came up with uh, lyrics. Uh, you know, changing the lyrics to Old Town Road to Old Fish Barn, but I won't sing because it's um, I can't sing. It's awful. So. I'll have to get Joel to do it. See if I can talk Corvus into singing it. So. Um, I know what I... Okay. So, I was listening to the radio today. I had to go to an appointment, so I worked from home today. But, uh, listening to the radio on the... Uh, yeah, I gotta find someone who's got some talent to actually halfway match it so it sounds good. Um... Yeah, I've, I've written three or four Fish Nerd um, songs, actually. Um, kind of in, like, in my head, anyway. I've never, like, put them down on paper. Um, there's a couple, like, you know, kind of like the Cory meme ones. You know, there's, um, instead of... If you ever have heard the old song called Hang On Sloopy, um, if you ever um, have to listen to an Ohio State game... Um, uh, usually, like, the third or fourth quarter, they start playing Hang On Sloopy. And... <laughs> wow, that's good, Fishy Biz. We'll take that float to the old fish barn. We're going to swim to we can. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> that is... That's even better than what I came up with. That is epic. That, that is going to be saved... For uh, that will be safe for eternity. That we're gonna swim or take that float to the old fish bar. I can't. They won't let me copy it. That's awesome. I might have. I won't do it now because I'm not ready to do it, but. I'd have to get I'd have to get someone like Joel to do it, but um. So I came up with "Hang On Koopy," um, kind of to the same uh, lyrics to "Hang On Sloopy." Um, I never wrote out the whole song or anything, but I just kind of thought it out in my head. And then uh, the other one was um, the Copa Cabana. Uh, you can call it the Koopy Cabana. That might actually be a meme I'll make someday. But anyways, I was listening to the radio. And they were talking, and it's, it's summertime. Uh, the Detroit baseball team isn't any good. It's kind of, they're, they're grasping at straws for stuff to talk about. So they talked about... Thanks, Candy. <laughs> uh, Candy immortalized that. So, so I appreciate it, Candy. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so basically, uh, what they were going to say is, uh, the story was a robber comes into your house, uh, breaks into your house, what's on the top of your refrigerator? So, basically, you know, people had guns, some people had chips, some people had, um, 
gar base with tomato cuttings, we'll call it. Uh, let me see. Uh, what's some other ones? There were some other other ones. So we're gonna change the game up a little bit uh, in the last few minutes here. Got the cichlids in the back puffer on attack. <laughs> Got me to the snack. <laughs> oh boy, I think we might rip this off right here. <laughs> See, this is what happens when Scott leaves. All the fun stuff happens, like when Scott leaves. <laughs> I might not be able to finish the stream. Oh boy. Oh, oh wow. Well then. Uh, I got you. I do this. Oh boy. Well then. Got cichlids in the back. Puffer on attack. Got PGs for snacks. Some people think it's bad. Oh boy. Um, I guess we're going to make this song after all. So what I was going to do is we'll play a little game. So, what is in... Well, we don't use the top of the fridge. We'll keep it fish-related. Um, so, what is sitting on top of your nearest aquarium stand? And I will be fair, and I will play as well. And I have the camera. And they nobody tell me nothing. That's... So, all right. So... Uh, what's sitting on the aquarium stand to the nearest tank that you have, other than the light. Um, so, I have a habit of leaving things places, so I'm going to show you what I have, because I will play fair. If I'm going to make you do it, I will show you what I've got. So, we are going up in the fish room, and so we've got an empty viber of bug bites. Uh, cap to some foam, uh, spectrum pellets, um, the cap to the bug bites that I need to throw out, more bug bites, um, another cap, cap to something I don't have anymore, another cap, and uh, aquarium co-op fry food. So that's what we got. So, and I think we just killed it. You guys still got audio? Coffee. <laughs> oh, I think we... All right. Did you guys freeze up? Let me see. Um, the ventral flap audio, is also yes. called a okay. pelvic vermin. That's the thing that's on their belly. Um, uh, I think we lost the, the camera. Red uh, it, it's bordered above in black and it has uh, multiple of Alright, that's what I get for moving it, don't I? Alright, so it looks like we lost the camera. Did I unplug it? Maybe I unplugged it. awesome all right sound is good um, camera is not on that's not good all right let's see what happened to the camera why is the camera not on that is the six thousand dollar question all right, well, yeah, see the camera didn't fly away, so, all right, guys, so I think, um, I guess that is the end. We're at 10.01 anyway, so I will figure out why my camera's decided to take a whatever, and uh, we'll go ahead and end it here, so, uh, 
So stay fishy. Uh, keep on breeding. Uh, if you're not subscribed here, uh, did it run away instead? <laughs> no, it didn't. It's, it's still sitting here. It's sitting right in front of me. That's what I get for being honest, I guess. So, uh, that being said, we'll go ahead here and uh, um, go ahead uh, end it here. So, thanks a lot, guys. Uh, nope, I'm not blaming the kids on this one either. <laughs> All right, guys. Talk to you later.